How I became a chemist is an interesting question. The answer, I think, runs back to my childhood when I grew up in a charming village that had a spring, a natural spring, a creek, and a nearby forest. We did not have electricity growing up in my village, and the life was pretty simple. This simple way of life, I think, gave me a great opportunity to interact with my natural world. My friends and I would go to the forest to collect firewood, berries, and plants after school. These nature excursions helped me develop a curiosity for the natural world. I often wondered, for example, how the water bugs run on the surface of the water without drowning and how geckos defied gravity on the ceiling of my schoolhouse. When I learned the atomic and molecular basis of these phenomena in my chemistry class, I fell in love with chemistry. Now, whenever I see a chemical equation, I imagine it occurring in its natural setting. In ocean water, in a water puddle, in the sky, inside a plant or an animal cell, rather than in a test tube or a beaker in a laboratory. It gives me a feeling of connection to the subject that I love. I am thankful to my 6th grade science teacher who commended me for my observational skills. I think it is very important for students to know their small strengths to nurture them daily because skills build confidence. Before becoming a college professor, I worked as a quality assurance manager in the pharmaceutical industry. I also worked as a postdoctoral research associate at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. At those places, I saw chemistry in action for the benefit of human life. I think students can learn not only the subject matter but also useful life skills from their instructors. To that extent, I start each of my classes with a short period of focus training, a practice that is known to enhance the learning ability of the brain by making healthy biochemical pathways within us. In fact, I would like to give you a quick experience of this practice now. When I ring the bell, you are invited to follow the instructions until you hear the second bell. So let us begin. Sit comfortably with your back straight and hands resting on your lap. Soften your face, relax your shoulders. Place one of your hand on your abdomen. Tune into your breath. Close your eyes. Feel the rise and fall of your breath. And that is focus training. I think our brains are now ready to discuss chemistry and stoichiometry. Hello class, do you like muffins? I love muffins. So I'm going to show you how to use a simple muffin recipe to understand the stoichiometry of a given chemical reaction. Here is my favorite muffin recipe. One cup of water, two packs of muffin mix. Follow the directions on the package and I will get 12 muffins. This is like a chemical equation. In fact, this is my muffin equation. Let us say I want to bake 96 muffins for my students. 96 muffins. Now I can calculate the number of packs of muffin mix I need using this relationship between 2 packs of muffin mix to 12 muffins. Like this. 2 packs of muffin mix over 12 muffins. So muffins to muffins get cancelled. I need 16 packs of muffin mix. 
This quantitative information, one cup of water to two packs of muffin mix to 12 muffins, is very important to bake good muffins. Similar quantitative information in a chemical equation is called the stoichiometry of the reaction. In other words, stoichiometry is the quantitative relationship between reactants and products in a given chemical reaction. Just the way we calculate the number of packs of muffin mix needed to bake 96 muffins, we can calculate the amounts of reactants or products in a given chemical reaction using its stoichiometry. Now, let us look at a chemical reaction. This is the chemical equation for combustion of gasoline. Here, gasoline is represented by this octane molecule which is one of the major components of gasoline and the stoichiometry of the reaction is given by the coefficients of the equation. So, the stoichiometry of this reaction is 2 moles of gasoline to 25 moles of oxygen to 16 moles of carbon dioxide to 18 moles of water. Now, let us look at the most important stoichiometric ratio in this reaction. That is 2 moles of gasoline to 16 moles of carbon dioxide. Why is this stoichiometry important? Because we know carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that is responsible for global warming. We can calculate the amount of carbon dioxide released to the atmosphere due to combustion of gasoline if we know the amounts of gasoline. Of course, we know the amounts of gasoline we use. Now let us use this information to answer a question. I want to find out the amount of carbon dioxide in grams released to the atmosphere by burning 1000 grams of gasoline. Let us label gasoline or octane as gas for simplicity. And we can break down this problem into several steps. That is, if I know the moles of gas, I can find out the moles of carbon dioxide by using the stoichiometry of the reaction. Just the way we calculate the number of packs of muffin mix needed to bake 96 muffins. So the conversion factor here is 16 moles of carbon dioxide over 2 moles of gas. The next step is easy that is to convert the moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. I can simply use the molar mass of carbon dioxide that is 44 grams of carbon dioxide over one mole as the conversion factor. Now the problem is we don't know the number of moles of gas used but we know the mass of gas that's been used. We can simply use the mass of gas, that is grams of gas, and convert gram of gas to moles of gas. In order to do this conversion, we need the molar mass of gas, that is say 114 grams per mole. Now here, the conversion is from grams of gas to moles of gas. So the conversion factor ought to be 1 mole of gas over 114 grams of gas. Okay. Now we have a good plan. So let us calculate the answer. We begin with the grams of gas and convert that to moles of gas. If the conversion factor is correct, grams of gas to grams of gas should cancel. Similarly, we can continue the rest of the calculation. So you see moles of gas to moles of gas get cancelled, moles of carbon dioxide to moles of carbon dioxide get cancelled. So the answer is 3.1 times 10 to the power of 3 grams of carbon dioxide. That is 3.1 kilograms of carbon dioxide will be released if we burn 
1000 grams of gasoline or 1 kilograms of gasoline that is slightly less than half a gallon of gasoline. I hope this video will be useful to you. Thank you for watching.